Um, look, I, I've been doing some consulting work for Woomera Mining. Uh, my day job is I'm actually a managing director of an ASX explorer focused in New South Wales called Rimfire Pacific Mining. I could talk about that company for hours, but I won't. In my spare time, I look after all the South, of, uh, South Australian projects for Woomera. So in that capacity, I'll be talking on behalf of Jason. He sends his apologies. He flew over from Perth last night and um, there's some impending uh, dramas at home that he has to rush back to Perth this morning and attend to. So um, I'm presenting on behalf of Jason. I've seen this presentation for the first time five minutes ago, so please forgive me and I'll see what I can do. Okay, Woomera Mining, obligatory disclaimer. Woomera has been around for many, many years and there's probably people in this room that remember Woomera Mining from uh, over the last sort of 10, 15 years. The company was founded, it was based in Adelaide originally and it was founded on a portfolio of exploration tenements, obviously with the name up around the, the Woomera area. These days its head office is in, in Perth it still retains a corporate se uh, company secretary, David Lind, here, and also director here in Adelaide, but all the rest of the guys are based over in Western Australia. The company on its board, very experienced explorers and mine developers, and Jason himself has recently uh, come to the company uh, as the managing director, a very enthusiastic and, and passionate geologist and managing director. I won't go through the corporate snapshot, but suffice to say the company has just raised over $2 million on the back of the, uh, the gold lithium and also rare earth projects both in South Australia and Western Australia and uh, is cashed up and, and very determined to get into both the South Australian assets that I'll talk about briefly and also their portfolio of, of projects in, in Western Australia. In terms of the, in terms of the portfolio, I know nothing about the West Australian assets, so I'm eminently qualified to tell you how good they are. But they're all very much focused around um, uh, lithium and gold. And at the moment, I think it's fair to say that they're sort of trying to work through their priorities as to where they allocate uh, a lot of their the West Australian spend. And if, you, if you're following the market, and particularly in Western Australia at the moment, anything with the magic uh, word lithium in, in the title is always getting a lot of attention. So there's there's a bit of a discussion at board level as to where they prioritise their cash and their focus over there. But we'll talk about South Australia. And in South Australia, they have two projects, what we call the Labyrinth Project, which is uh, just northwest of Glendambo, north of Kingunya on Northwell Station. And they also have the, the East Musgrave, or the, the Musgrave Project, which is literally on the, the, the uh, border with the Northern Territory up in the top end of the state. If we turn our attention to Labyrinth, Labyrinth is a, is a really interesting project and it's a classic case and a few of the speakers before me have alluded to these sort of stories where you can still find in, in, in relatively heavily explored areas little gems, little gems of where a lot of prospectivity and, and no work has been undertaken. And this is a, a single tenement uh, project called Labyrinth. It's on the northern margin of Lake Labyrinth and you access it through uh, the Northwell Homestead, Northwell Station Homestead. And I must give a shout out to the, uh, the station manager at Northwell, Matt Karen, absolute delight to deal with, and they've been most cooperative in uh, letting us get on with our work up there. This is a project that uh, has been sitting out, in, in, out there for several years. Woomera has done a little bit of sort of uh, desktop review type work, and they got me on board probably about eight to 12 months ago now to really try and revitalise this project. And the first thing we did, go back and do a historic uh, literature review, and we noticed that in, on, the, on the tenement, down in the southwest of the tenement, there was a, there was a drill hole that CRA drilled in 1998 on the, on the banks of Lake Labyrinth. You'd never get away with drilling on the edge of a salt lake in this area today, so I don't know how they did it in those days, but they did it. Anyway, the hole was drilled into a very prominent um, demagnetised zone, and as they drilled the hole, they went into a mineralised ultramafic unit, some sort of ultramafic intrusive, and what was different about it was that it was heavily enriched in both copper and also rare earths, neodymium in particular. And that sat there pretty much forgotten about in the archives for many, many years. But that's the first clue when you go and look at this area, there's actually something special going on. That map on the, uh, the right-hand side of your screen is a magnetic image, I believe. You can see the tenement outline there, that sort of north-south rectangular shape. And in the bottom southwest corner of the tenement, you've got the Lake Labyrinth shear zone. 
And that's all the area which is being explored by um, our, one of the other peer group companies, Indiana Resources, who I think are talking here later on today. And as you may know, down on the Lake Labyrinth Shear Zone, there is a number of historic mining occurrences. Indiana and the predecessors have, are working up a series of uh, gold resources and also some new rare earth discoveries as well. So this area is gradually getting some attention. But surprisingly, the bulk of the tenement had never been explored before. So um, in November last year, I went out with the traditional owners. We did a heritage clearance. Uh, we spent most of our time trying to hunt for wombats down wombat burrows with the elders, which was good fun. But we ended up clearing all the area north of Lake Labyrinth. And then we uh, conducted an auger drilling survey, uh, an auger drilling sample, uh, program. First pass auger drilling on 300 metre centres. And we ended up finding a lot of gold anomalies and we closed that up to 100 metre centres and uh, these results were only announced to the market uh, I think in the last, last quarter. And what this map shows, all the little coloured dots are basically all the gold anomalies. So we've actually picked up a whole series of, of gold anomalies over a northwest southeast trending structure which we've called the eastern shear zone. And in, interestingly that shear zone is, has been developed parallel and is probably a, a, an analogue to the Lake Labyrinth shear zone just to the southwest. When we went back and looked at the assays in more detail, we realised that there was also a lot of rare earth anomalism um, associated with, with some of those gold anomalies. There's a whole host of other images that I would have used that sort of shows you the rare earth anomalism and some of the context for that rare earth uh, anomalism in, in greater detail, but we haven't got that here. But suffice to say that when you drill down and look at the, 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 the geological setting for a lot of these anomalies, not only are they in associated with these shear zones, but there's actually a couple of radiometric, isolated radiometric highs, which we think are probably, you know, obviously some sort of hot granite or some sort of hot rock source for this rare earth anomalism as well. So at the moment, we're in the process of um, going through all the regulatory approvals, the, the e-peppers, um, the heritage clearances, to go and start following up these anomalies. So the next step for this project is to conduct a series of reconnaissance air core traverses across both the gold and the, the rare earth anomalies. Um, we'll be looking to do that in, in March, the March quarter of next year. We've got the contractor lined up and uh, we'll, we'll get the heritage surveys done uh, fairly shortly as well. So that's Labyrinth. What comes out of this project? Who knows, but given its location, Given that we're really trying to put an area that's been previously forgotten back on the map, you know, the first day, the first signs for this project are really encouraging. If we turn our attention to the, the Musgrove project, so Woomera have, up until only a couple of, uh, probably a month or two ago, Woomera has about the only area of the Musgrave inlier in South Australia that is readily accessible. Plenty of the Musgrave inlier, as, as you know in this room, exists in South Australia, but the majority of it is inside the APY lands, and access into the APY lands for, for mining and exploration is very difficult. Woomera has always had a, a small parcel of tenements up here, and you can see um, on that map there's a, little, there's a little square in the middle of the, uh, that's, I'm not sure that's a MAG or a gravity image. Um, and once again, this is a project which has had a bit of a chequered history, which we won't go into. But there has been a little bit of work done on this project over the last couple of years by both the Geological Survey and also Woomera in its own right, where they have been able to confirm within the, within the rocks out there, and there's a lot of sand cover, so it's quite problematic at the surface. They have been able to confirm the presence of Giles Complex rocks. So these are the ultra, mafic, ultra mafic intrusive rocks that further to the west, to the west and into um, Western Australia, host the, the Nebo Babel uh, mineralisation. So they're the actual host rocks that you're looking for. Um, some of the early reconnaissance drilling has co confirmed nickel fertility in one or two of the, the, uh, the now uh, known occurrences of Joel's complex rocks, um, but we really don't know a lot about the, the bulk of the area. Interestingly, over the last three to four months, Rio Tinto has gone in and pegged every last skerrick of vacant ground, so the whole area has now been pegged, so clearly Rio knows something that we don't. Um, and as the next step here, we are actually planning an airborne EM survey. We're hoping to get it away um, before Christmas, but with, uh, with both cattle mustering activities, um, scheduling of contractors and the like, we'll now be looking to do this airborne EM survey in, um, I think it's the first, or well, I think it's the March quarter of next year. And the intention there is very simple, is to basically go and screen a very large area. We'll be capturing both airborne EM data as well as magnetic data. And the hope is that we'll be able to generate a whole series of new targets. I mentioned before one of the problems with this project 
is that there is a sand cover, which, which obviously you know, blankets all the, all the bedrock geology, but there's also some massive gaps in data. So there are still vast tracts of this part of the world where there is no, there's no airborne geophysical data, there's no magnetic data and stuff. So when you're dealing with sand veneer, it's very hard to try and identify these prospective host units. So the airborne EM survey that we'll be doing will obviously uh, fill in some of these gaps. It will hopefully generate uh, you know, bedrock EM conductors that are potentially indicative of nickel sulfide mineralization, as well as plug in, plug in the gaps and the magnetic anomalies. So really, that's about it for, for Woomera. The rest of the presentation is on the West Australian projects. And look, I'm not qualified to talk about those. Suffice to say that uh, at first glance, they're, they're very interesting, getting a lot of attention. And uh, Woomera, as I say, are, are, are prioritising work on the West Australian assets as well. Um, I think that's really all I can say. But uh, thank you for your attendance. Apologise, uh, apologies for coming at the last minute. And I wish you a great conference. Thank you.